is rising your presence in the room there is a holy story our hearts are full of faith and when we come together all hell begins to shake we came ready to worship we came ready to praise we came ready to love you we came ready with thanks we came ready to worship we came ready to praise we came ready to love you we came ready with thanks it's only getting louder everyone lift up a shout we're gonna praise you nothing's gonna slow us down we're gonna praise you it's only getting louder everyone lift up a shout we're gonna praise you nothing's gonna stop us nothing's gonna slow us down we're gonna praise you we're gonna praise you come on we're gonna praise you we love you lord we're gonna praise you we are we're gonna praise you we're gonna praise you we're gonna praise you oh we're gonna praise you oh we came ready to worship we came ready to praise we came ready to love you we came ready with thanks we came ready to worship we came ready to praise we came ready to love you we came ready with thanks it's only getting louder everyone lift up a shout we're gonna praise you nothing's gonna stop us nothing's gonna slow us down we're gonna praise you it's only getting louder everyone lift up a shout we're gonna praise you nothing's gonna stop us nothing's gonna slow us down we're gonna praise you come on we're gonna praise you with all our hearts we're gonna praise you we love you lord we're gonna praise you we're gonna praise you come on and praise him tonight we're gonna praise you because you're worthy we're gonna praise you we're gonna praise you oh we're gonna praise you we're gonna praise you oh we came ready to worship we came ready to praise we came ready to love you we came ready with thanks all we want is encounter to see you face to face we came ready to worship we came ready to praise all we want all we want is encounter to see you face to face we came ready to love you we came ready to praise all we want all we want is encounter come on that's our prayer to see you face to face we came ready to worship we came ready to praise all we want all we want is encounter all we want all we want is encounter 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 to see you face to face we came ready to worship we came ready to praise hallelujah we thank you lord we praise your name jesus come on can you lift up a shout lift up a shout of praise 
He's worthy, He's worthy, He's worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. I got a song and I'll sing it loud. My praise is pouring out. My praise is pouring out. Yeah. Come on, put your hands together. We're going to lift up our praise. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God, born of his spirit. Oh, I'm washed in his blood. Oh. Can't stop singing in this freedom song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long, all the day long. I got a song and I'll sing it loud. My praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out. And I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out, you have brought me out. Hey, come on. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy, you are worthy. Hey. hey! Blessed assurance, and Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Purchased of God, born of his spirit. Oh, I'm washing his blood. Oh, I can't stop singing this freedom song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long, all the day long. I got a song and I'll sing it loud. The praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out. And I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out. You have brought me out. I got a song. I'm singing it loud. Praise is pouring out. I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out. You have brought me out. Come on, we're going to praise him tonight. The Bible says to leap for joy. If you got a leap in your soul, come on. Yeah. Come on. Did he heal you? Did he free you? Did he save your soul? Did he make you whole? Did he wash you? Transform you? Redeem you? And cleanse you? Did he set you free? Give you victory? When he died for you on Calvary? Did he give you peace? Did he give you hope? When he filled you with the Holy Ghost? Come on. Somebody shout it out. I got a song and I'll sing it loud. My praise is pouring out. Praise is pouring out. And I will dance. I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out. Hey. Come on, this is a testimony song. Do you have a praise for what he's done? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up a mighty praise. Did he heal you? Yes. Did he free you? Yes. Did he save your soul? Yes. Did he make you whole? Yes. Did he wash you? Yes. Transform you? Yes. Redeem you? Yes. And cleanse you? Yes. Did he set you free? Yes. Give you victory? Yes. When he died yes. for you on Calvary? Yes. Yes. Did he give you peace? Yes. Did he give you hope? When he filled you with the Holy Ghost? Yes. 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 I got 
a song and I'll sing it loud. My praise is pouring out, praise is pouring out, and I will dance. I will dance in your freedom you now. You have brought me out. I got a song. Dance. I will dance in your freedom now. You have brought me out. Hey, we give you praise. Come on, I just feel like there's a shout in this room. I feel like there's freedom in your dance. I feel like there's joy in your leap. I feel like there's victory in your praise. So come on, you gotta move a little bit. Come on. If all you can do is lift a foot, then lift a foot. Come on. We're going to have breakthrough in this room tonight. Did he heal you? Did he free you? Did he save your soul? Did he make you whole? Did he wash you? Transform you? Redeem you? And cleanse you? Did he set you free? Give you victory? When he died for you? Did he give you hope when he filled you with the Holy Ghost? Did you praise him where you worship him? Where you lift him up with all your might? Where you sing a song? Where you shout it out? If you've got a song, somebody shout it out. I got a song and I sing it loud. Praise is pouring out. Praise is pouring out. And I will dance. Stop shouting. Come on, give him a shout like you got your miracle. Give him a shout for what he's already done. Now give him a shout for what he's about to do. I want you to lift your hands and declare right now that you're already healed. And tonight when you get hands laid on you, it's going to be easy. The manifestation's coming quickly. So I want you right now, just declare it right now. Lord, I thank you for healing me of. And just go ahead. And just, Lord, I thank you for healing me of the pain. I thank you for healing me of whatever it is. Every ligament, every joint, headache, back problems, arthritis, cancer, it's all defeated. Tonight, in Jesus' name. Lord, we commit this time, this moment to you and we declare that the next couple of hours or however long we're here God Lord that there will be miracle after miracle after miracle Lord anoint our hearts to receive those here and those watching online we thank you tonight is your night in Jesus mighty name and everybody said amen amen remain standing for just a moment I have one uh, one simple announcement don't miss tomorrow night Get on the phone. Help us spread the word. Get people here. One last night with Billy Burke is tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. How many will call somebody? We'll share some, the, the post. We'll get online. Tell them to get in the house. Get in the house tomorrow night. Amen. Now I want you to put your hands together and welcome to the pulpit once again, Billy Burke, as he comes to minister to us tonight. Come on, somebody. Hey. Hey. Somebody give God some praise tonight. Hey. I just never have seen a sad person get healed. I mean it. 
I mean, the reason that we spend so much time worshiping Him and praising Him is it takes the attention off of us. You forget about you and you begin to lift Him up. And when you begin to lift Him up, I mean, He just removes the thoughts of the day, the cares of the day, stuff that has you weighed down and kind of frees you up and gets you into an expectancy kind of a mood. Say, come on, I'm expecting. I didn't sound like you're expecting. I'm expecting. This section concerns me right over here. I think there's only three of you that are expecting over here. I'm expecting. Say it took a little bit of pushing. I'm expecting. I'm expecting. I said I'm expecting. What's that mean? Means I'm looking for it. I'm looking for, I'm looking for no pain. I'm looking for better vision. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for it. You got to be a little pushy. There's a guy called the devil that don't want you to get anything. He wants you to waste your time in church. You can waste time in church. You can come in here and be involved in the group singing and worship and all of that and, and just waste what? Not even capitalize on the grace he's giving out to you. You're here to get smarter. You're here to get wiser. You're here to undo some burdens. You're here to get some healing. You're here to get under the anointing. You're here to capture some glory. Come on. One of my favorite Bible verses is Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5. It says this. He captures the wind with his fist. Come on, give me your hand out there. He captures the wind with his fist. What's that mean? He seizes the moment. There'll never be another moment like tonight. Let's, let's jump on this. Let's jump on this. Come on, every hand up in the whole place. Say, Holy Spirit, I need you. If I've ever needed you to intervene into my affairs, it's right now. I'm doing everything I can, but I need some extra help. I need help from heaven. Oh, I need heaven's help. Talk to me tonight. Touch me tonight. Release me tonight. But I don't want to go home the same. I want to add to my testimony. Yet another miracle. Yet another breakthrough. I declare tonight, I'm a receiver. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on. Come on, I want you to give him one more big shout.
is impossible when you put your trust in God. Nothing, nothing is impossible when you're trusting in His word. Hearken to the voice of the God you see. Is there anything too hard for me? Well, put your trust in God alone. Yes. Come on. Wait. Give him a mighty, mighty shout. I, I don't know a better way, a more simple way to help people keep their healing miracle than to give God glory. If half of the testimonies that people have received ever get out in public, or if they ever get loosed in the church that they go to, I, it just amazes me the number of people that get great miracles. What's a great miracle? The one you get. I don't care if you have an achy little finger. Come on, somebody. If you get a miracle, it says, wow, it is a miracle. There's nothing too small and nothing too large. But, again, it amazes me the number of people that, yeah, I just don't want to, I don't want to just say it in public. That's not my personality. Well, the devil has a personality, and he wants to steal it. And the way that you let it be stolen is, is that if you don't thank God for what he did do, why would you want to motivate God to do more? He's, he wants you to be faithful with what he does give you. You know, and I know last night there had to be a, a bunch of people get healed here last night. I just felt virtue leaving all night long. I mean it. I mean that one guy here. I don't know if he's here tonight. They had the red shirt on. Where's he at? Is he here tonight? He's not here. He's probably so healed he took a night off. I'll tell you that. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes people that get healed never come back. And you say, I wonder why. And it's because they got healed. That was, they came for that reason. They got it. And they you know it'd be great if they came back and gave God the praise. But let me help you with this. Somehow, some way. I mean, your testimony of what he's did for you. He gave you peace. He healed a part of your body. He healed a broken heart. He delivered you from a spirit. I was in one church, and, and I mean that it caused such a ruckus because one of the elders said he got delivered. Oh, did the pastor ever get mad at me? That one of his elders said, yeah, demon came right off of me. And I mean, I thought, everybody thought that was great. So after the meeting, he took, there were a thousand people in this church in New Jersey. He took me in the back room right after the service. He's, he, threw, he got his Bible and he, he threw his Bible on the desk. He said, show me, Billy Burke, you show me. I said, show you what? Show me where a, a demon can be in my elder. He said, I want to know, was that demon in him or was that demon on him? Boy, that confused me right there. He said, was that demon in him or on him? I said, I think a little bit of both. <laughs> and I said, I'll show you. If you want to sit down, I'll take you to where a Christian can have that. He can't be possessed because God's possessing him. But see, God never said he would renew your mind. He said, that's up to you. And he never said he would, what, bring your body into place of, of greatness. He said, that's up to you to bring it under subjection. I'll save your spirit. You renew your own mind. Your mind is neutral ground. Your body is neutral ground. The only thing in you tonight that is possessed by God is your born-again spirit. Come on, give God a shout for that. Come on. Come on, give him a mighty praise for that. So, 
so listen to me. So, so he said, you show me. I said, do you want to sit down and do this? I said, we're scheduled for three more nights. You know, and he said, well, I don't know if we're going to go three more nights. If you think my elder had a demon. I said, sir, he's the one that said he had a demon. I didn't say he had a demon. I just touched him. and He said he felt the demon leap. Talk to your elder. Make your own kids behave. Come on, somebody say amen here. He said, well, after these meetings, I want you to sit down and show me where that's in the Bible. I said, well, start with Ananias and Sapphira. They were spirit-filled. They were spirit-filled. They just weren't born again. They were spirit-filled. But they opened up a door. I didn't say they were possessed, but they had something going on there. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't let nothing go on in here tonight. Come on, tell them right now. What am I saying? That testimony is so valuable. Everything God does for you. If you can't testify in your church, you know, testify at work. You know, testify, you know, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I saw a lady testify at P.F. Chang's, a Chinese restaurant in, where was that? In, in, in Louisville, Kentucky. We were sitting around the table and I saw a lady testify and shake up the whole place. I was sitting there watching, like, listen, OMG, say OMG. <laughs> OMG. I thought, look, watch what happens here. One testimony, you know, and it, and it wasn't even like, a, you know, a cancer or anything like that. It was just something that was meaningful to her. If we had more people know what you're being healed from and delivered from, there'd be more love in the church. There'd be more compassion in the church. If I understood what you're going through, because everybody gets judged. We all get judged for all kind of crazy things, right? But if I knew what you were going through, I might be, whoa, a little less, hmm, you know, like, well, maybe I shouldn't be thinking that about her, because she has to go through all that just to get to a church meeting. You know, I mean, it's really... Catherine Coleman said to me, she said, you know, I used to be so one way when I was just a young lady preacher. But as she said, as I got older, I began to see the vans pull up and all that it took for someone to get there in a van, in a wheelchair. You forget that. You see them all lined up over here. You forget the effort that it took to go to a healing meeting. And she said, and many times I watched them. She was what she said to me. I watched them load them back up, back up into the van, and it broke my heart. Wow. That's what she said. And I said, well, what, why is that? She said, because I, they just didn't manifest in the meeting. She said, I want everyone to manifest in the meeting. The effort that it takes for people, for you to be here. Come on, let's just give God a praise for everybody that's here tonight. Come on. Come on, a, a mighty shout in this room. You know, you gotta, sometimes you've got to remind yourself, you didn't walk into Starbucks tonight or Wendy's or McDonald's. We walk in and out of different presence all day long. We didn't, we're not walking into a gas station here to pay the bill. You walked in to a holy place. This is a sacred sanctuary for the evening. It's very sacred. And we got to really capture the presence while we're here. I just sang to him. I just worshiped him. Who's him? J-E-S-U-S. The Holy One of Israel. That's how I keep Jesus fresh. I don't always call him Jesus. I'll say that you're, the, you're, you're, man, you are the second person of the Trinity. You're the Son. Or I'll say you're the Holy One of Israel. You're the Son of Man and then you're the Son of God. To, to Luke, he was the Son of Man. But to John, he was the Son of God. You know? And he's the Alpha and he's the Omega. And he's the author and he's the finisher. He's the soon and coming king, and, and he's the lily of the valley. Come on, he's the bright and morning star. Come on, somebody. Someone said, how can I make my, my reading the scriptures refreshing? Get a different translation. 
get the amplified get the new passion translation don't just stay in one trend if that Jack Hayford said he reads in every other month he was reading a different translation he would take a month at a time and I you know I thought Jack Hayford did a pretty good job with his personal walk you know it's, it's pretty it's pretty important that you find a way to keep it fresh if you know how to keep your food fresh right I said right well, don't make your, your natural food more powerful than your spiritual food. Change the times that you pray. Change the way that you fast. Change your approach to Him. You know? But somehow make your approach to Him different than anything else. Just quit rolling in the church and singing song. You're here every time you come. here Sunday morning when you come to hear Pastor John. And, and when Sister Rhea is here and the whole team is up here singing, it, it's so easy to forget where you are. Oh, I was back there just getting ready to come out here and I felt the presence. I, I did. Come on, I did, I did, I did. There's one restaurant I go to, you can smell the Italian aroma before, it's a block away, you can smell it. I mean, I'm already, I'm hungry on the way there, I'm full before I get there. Just smelling that aroma. The Bible says we have an aroma of life unto life, and also death unto death. There's an aroma around every believer. Do you understand that? That's what Paul told the Corinthian church that you can be smelt that people that want life you give them life but people that aren't interested in God you remind them of an eternal hell that's why some people don't like you you remind them of where they're going come on see I didn't know that well don't let that bother you I mean that's good that you have that presence coming off of you out of your belly flows rivers there's no water coming out of me tonight but there's presence. Come on, say, I got presence. It's the Holy Spirit. And I'm on overflow right now. I'm here to get overflow. It's going to flood my car, my truck, and my tractor, my home. Everywhere that I go, there's going to be presence. Come on, somebody give God a big, big shout. Ah, oh, come on, I said everybody, I mean everybody. Hey. Oh. You may be seated quickly tonight. The reason I said all of that is because if you're here tonight and you're here tomorrow night, if you're watching online tonight, if you're watching this stream, and, and, and Sister Rhea, I just miss you. I, I know you went through the surgery. You come out of that. You're recovering. Oh, I'd love to give you a hug. If you can make it here tomorrow night, that'd be great. Uh, John was telling me how you're feeling, and we, we give you a God bless you, Sister Rhea. Bless you. But see, here's the deal. With the testimony, I've, there's usually more that God wants to give you than just the healing. I don't want to say just the healing, but there's so much more. And, and to qualify for that is being faithful in what he's done for you. And someone says, well, no, wait till it's complete. Well, no, don't do that. Testify of the part that's happened. It's like, boy, I'm so much better. I can see better. I hear better. Like that man I told you, he was blind. He got his eyesight, but he didn't get any color. And he got mad at me, almost not mad, but disappointed almost. He said, well, can you give me color too? I said, I don't have any color tonight. I don't. Just testify the fact that you were blind and you can see. Or that, you know, that your hip isn't rubbing bone on bone anymore. Don't let the devil tell you that your testimony don't matter. It does matter. You're going to give it away. Give what away? That you're a Christian. And that you follow Jesus. That you believe in healing. And, and thank God for this church, for you, Pastor, that lets the gifts still flow. 
I mean that. Do you know, I mean, I've been in this a lot of years, and do you know the churches that no longer allow an altar to happen? Don't they know there's a major revival about to hit? Don't they know? What's it going to do? It's going to drive people back into the bingo halls. Back into the hotel ballrooms. That's what happened when A.A. Allen hit town. I mean, it, it, you know, and the, and the churches all got mad. Well, they got mad because he was seeing miracles. He was packing it out. And the people were going to go where they want to go where there's the moving of the Spirit. If it's winter, I want to go where it's warm. And if it's hot, I want to drive air conditioning. Come on. I mean, we all want what we want. And you have a church that gives you the full menu. Right here. Right here. Right here. Oh, you better thank God more than that. Oh, my word. And this is not, I'm going to tell you in case you didn't know it, this is not the easiest place to get to. You can get lost with G GPS here. You can get lost with the satellites. You can end up over at the truck stop. Or, come on. And yet every time we're here, you show up. We already, I think you already told me there's what, 4,000. 4,000 on watching online. 4,000 right now. Oh, you better do a little bit better than that. Come on. Come on. So when you, in your spare time, if there's a missing place on your prayer list, pray for this pastor and his wife and the team here. Did you enjoy that worship tonight? Amen. How many are visiting tonight? Come on, you're visiting tonight. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Then you're coming from somewhere to be here, right? And you want to go home with why you came. I mean, the first time I saw Catherine Coleman, I said to my grandmother, I said, how can that old lady help anybody? I, I'm sorry I said that. That was a horrible thing to say. I'm older than when, what she was when I said it. And I don't think that I'm old, I'm older. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, that's the perfect thing to say, I'm older. Say it. <laughs> and my grandmother said, don't you dare talk like that. Don't you dare talk like that. So after I was healed and Catherine would ask me to come in, I would meet her at the William Penn Hotel in downtown Pittsburgh. That's where we kind of get together once. That's where she liked to, to meet and have a little tea or whatever she drank. I remember completely. But I would take my friends to meet her because I wanted my friends, my, you know, my high school friends that didn't believe in all this at all. And I wanted some of them to meet her. So I'd, I'd go down and I'd say, okay, before we go in there, just don't get close to her. Don't get close. <laughs> and and my, one, my one friend said, why? I said, just don't. He said, what's that about? I said, you could end up on the floor. That's what that's about. <laughs> no. and it's so true. And, and it scared me. He said, well, now you got me afraid. I mean, she, is she a magic person? Does she do magic? Uh, sort of. It's, it's, it's kind of, because I wasn't who I am now. And I was just kind of trying to hold back. I didn't want to tell them the full thing. Slaying, Holy Ghost, anointing. That's our language. People out there don't understand a lot of that. There's people that have run out of our services. They get afraid of that. Aren't you glad you have a church right here? I'm telling I can't underline it enough. I mean, I go to some pretty strong places, and they say to me, Billy, we just can't give that kind of time. If you can come in and pray for people like in 15 minutes, you have 1,000 people. How am I going to pray for people? I can say one prayer, maybe. Well, then just, you know, we're going to, we have to, we're, you know, we're changing. We're not going the same way we always went. Really? Well, have you read the Gospels? Have you read that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? 
Have you read that part? You know, have you, you, this my friend in Puerto Rico, he's not there no more, but they had a church of 10,000. I went there for 10 years. And, and the first year that I was there, we had such a great meeting. He said to me, I bring you back every year in January. January. I said, okay, but why January? John, why January? He said, January. He said, I bring you in, get my people healed, then they work strong for me all year. <laughs> You know, and I thought, a little bit of a mixed motive right there. But isn't it true, whenever you don't feel well, your motivation stops. You don't feel like doing much. You don't even feel like cutting the grass. You don't feel like doing the dishes. You don't feel like you want to paint that wall you've wanted to. You got the paint, the paint's sitting there, but... You just don't have the energy to do it or the desire. It's that pinched nerve, you know? It's that broken heart. When, when circumstances, don't let anybody tell you. They're not supposed to, but they affect us. They affect us. When stuff's going on with your children and you just, you're there, but you're not there. And where are you at? Well, I'm just concerned about, well, have you prayed? I have. Have you given it over? I have. But I, you can't apologize for being human. And I'm not going to ever apologize for being human. You know, and, and neither should you. But we should be growing in our trust that what God has started, he's going to finish. Come on, come on, give him a shout, come on. Someone said, but you have the gift of healing. I do not have the gift of healing. I don't know anybody that does. I don't believe anybody has the gift of anything. My Bible says they're the gifts of the Spirit. Right? They're the, say that they're the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if you read Corinthians 12, it says he severs as he wills. It's right there in print. I mean, if I had a gift, and they think it's like a light switch, you just turn it on. And you have the gift. I said, no, if I had a switch, I wouldn't be in churches. I'd be in hospitals. I'd just be going down, you know, like they do, like all the, you know, the, the, the pastors do with to go to the, visit the hospital. I'd just go room to room. If I could just turn it on. I'd have to walk with him. I have to need him. I have to change my life. I can't be who I was. And him reside in me and through me. I mean, the cost is, I don't even know who I am half the time. You know, and it's so important for you to understand that everything comes with a price. Everything. You that want a healing, as I wanted a healing you know, from cancer and my... And my challenge with life and death and the changes I had to make there but to need him you know none of us really want to need anybody you're like me you're independent you don't like anybody telling you what to do I think that's who you are how many like how many don't like anybody telling you what to do let me see eh, we got a bunch of rebels here tonight look at that so, so whenever you have to get in where you need him to move, see, and you talked wrong all day and you didn't live right all day and, and you ate too much food and criticized too many people, then you walk in here and say, oh, Lord, use me. He says, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm not going to reward that. I'm, I'm, I, I will reward you of diligently seeking me. I'll reward you of this. But I'm not going to reward that. There's a cost to everything. So when Pastor John puts these meetings on the calendar, God has something in mind. He's speaking to him. I can make it work. We can get together. The musicians do their part. And all God asks is for you to come in here understanding that he has set the table for you. Oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. 
And my, I, my grandmother, so when I said that to my grandmother, that huh, she's so old, how can she help me? My grandmother leaned over me. She said, well, wait till she gets near you. Just wait till she gets near you and wait till she touches you. Then you tell me she's too old. And I mean when I fell, four rows fell with me, four rows of people on a marble floor. Old, old wooden pews in the Presby Church on 6th Avenue. And when four rows of people were laying everywhere, and I was numb, I, could, I tried to move my arms. I couldn't move anything. I couldn't move my legs. And I was really, I got afraid. And she was standing right over me. She said, oh, look at this. Look at and I'm thinking, I went somewhere, and that scary lady came with me, I'll tell you. And when I got up and afterwards, my grandmother says to me on the way home, she said, so how about that old woman? I said, man, she, she's not some old woman. I don't know. That woman's got powers. I didn't understand anything. I didn't understand anything. But what a journey it's been. And, and I say this to people. I say it to leaders as well. If you've never been slain, don't be afraid of that. You don't have to have that. Let me say that. But at the same time, I take the statue of Jesus with John the Baptist. John the Baptist said to Jesus, why am I baptizing you? I know we're cousins, but you should be baptizing me. And here's what Jesus said, that all righteousness might be fulfilled. What's that mean? Everything the Father wants me to have here, an experience here. I want that experience. Yes. Yes. Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Come on, you got to help, help me tonight. It's not a matter that you need it as much as, boy, if God wants me to have that and add that to my portfolio, you know, I've been saved, I've been healed, I've been delivered, I've been baptized, and oh man, I've been, we need to treat this, I've been slain. I've been under the power. I, I'm talking about really under, not the power of suggestion, the under the power. If you've never had that happen, Oh, some of the stuff that I've seen, I'll tell you what, it's, it's just remarkable to me that he does overboard to get you and I fully persuaded, fully persuaded. Sometimes we're not, you know, we're, we kind of believe, but we're not into fully persuaded yet. Guess what's on the way to your house? Something that's going to make you fully <laughs> persuaded. Yeah, come on, something. I don't know what it is, but something. Come on, put it together for the Lord tonight. I want to hear some men. Do we have any men here? All right, let's keep the men engaged all night. I want the men to be engaged. Give me half a dozen testimonies. Come on, from last night. Give me some people that were touched in a major way. Quickly, quickly, come quickly. Who are you here? You were touched last night in a major, major way. Here's one, here's two. Come on, give me four more, because we want to do the three. Here we go, boom, boom, boom. Here we go, we got them. Tell me what happened quickly, sweetheart. What happened? First time I've been to one of your services, I've been watching you for a few months, and I just became a Christian a few months ago. Oh and came up to the front at the end of the service. I have lupus and pain all the time. You touched me and I, I, God touched me through you. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't explain it. It was like a heat. I love it. I fell in the floor. I oh. couldn't move. I tried to get up. Oh. I couldn't get up. I went back down. I have no pain. No pain! Oh! No pain! Now, I don't know if you understand lupus, but, and I don't want you to go read about it on the internet either. But, and by the way, get off of the internet reading about your condition. That's in your book. It's not in Josh. Josh would not say day and night meditate on your condition. No, he says get your mind off of your condition by meditating what on the promise. 
But the pain that goes with lupus, it's indescribable. I mean, I've not had lupus, but I deal with a lot of people that had lupus. And you just, it doesn't, nothing stops it. You lost your hair over lupus. A couple of times a year, and I have to shave it and start over. Uh, it causes brain fog, fatigue, pain, nausea, headaches. Um, I did experience a little bit of pain today in my hands, and my husband, my wonderful, amazing husband, said, don't accept that. Where's he at? Good he job. needs a touch job, also. He, he's in stage renal disease on dialysis, and he also needs to be healed. Okay, so last night, excuse me, you went under the power. I did. And no pain? No, uh, no. I didn't have any pain until a little bit today in my hands, and he said, don't accept that. That's good. The devil's trying to steal what you got That's last good. night, so I said, no, no. And I'm, I'm done with the devil. I'm Somebody give to... God a shout for that power. Oh, oh. Woo! My God, I tell you. Oh! Oh! Can anybody make a little bit of noise? Oh! Even the seals at SeaWorld clapped their hands. Come on, see, I'm more than a seal. Gotta praise them. His name isn't coming out of our mouth enough. Lord, Savior, I, Holy One, dear Jesus, my Messiah, Master, whatever. Mm. You talk about the people that you love. That's what you do. You talk about them. They're on your mind. And get ready, you're going to see him really soon. Russia's nervous. China's biting their nails. They don't even know what's coming. They're worried about the United States. They better be worried about the armies of heaven. Come on! Oh, come on! Come on! The armies of heaven are on their way! My God! back and the armies of heaven follow him and that's you and I it says his vestures dipped in blood but behind him is us white robes not a drop of blood he takes the full brunt of the war and I mean it just says the antichrist is destroyed by the brightness the glory mm. Mm, 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 mm. Get ready, get ready. Get ready. You got to keep that. That's called the blessed hope. And we need, I'm grateful that your pastor teaches on that subject quite, Pastor John, right here, so much. But that's what gives people hope that there's more than here. And we're trying to make it here, and there's more than here. He said, I ride the clouds, that's my chariot, the, the clouds are my chariot. I create angels to talk to them. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. My, 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 my. What happened, sir? This lady's still getting healed. This is your wife, she's still getting healed. There's damaged tissue, some kind of damaged soft tissue. The lupus has damaged some soft tissue. And that soft tissue is actually changing colors. It's actually changing colors. Man, you're getting a whole new woman here, this lady right here. Wow. Where do you guys live? Where do you live close? We live three and a half hours away. Three and a half hours away. Well, thank you for being here, for driving all that way. What happened here, sir? <coughs> well, uh, last night I got partial root vision in my eye and then uh, you said to find the axe head find go, the back, what, no? go back in time axe. and find the axe head find the axe head yes and so my daughters and I this morning we we had a Holy Ghost meeting <laughs> you went looking for the axe head yeah well we went or you through, lost it we went through a lot of stuff but that was one of them 
and I found it. <gasps> yeah. And uh, we cut off the snake's head. You cut and, the snake's yeah, head yeah. off. And it had, to, it had to do with healing. Has to do with? With healing. With healing. Mm -hmm. And uh, after my wife died of a brain, brain tumor. Okay. Kind of like, kind of like yours. It was malignant, uh -huh. and they could only get part of it out. Uh -huh. And she lived 18 months. Okay. And uh, anyway, I was all into healing and all that stuff, and uh, she didn't get healed. Okay. So the snake got me. She got the ultimate healing. Now, a lot of people don't like to hear that. I don't like. They don't like to hear that, but. If you go there, you're going to realize you don't ever have to get healed again. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the ultimate. Those people that are already there, your relatives and your friends, I mean, they don't, they never use Ben Gay anymore. <laughs> Come on, they just don't. Come on. Come on. Come on. They don't have braces on and wraps on and smell like a medicine cabinet going to bed. Come on, somebody. No. And they're not just floating around. They have a celestial body. You know, it's just amazing. Jesus went from resurrected body to, you know, to a glorified form. He wasn't even glorified in the garden. He got glorified after, so you go from a, a, a corruptible body to a natural body, spiritual body, that you can see. Then you go into a glorified form. It's just incredible. Who knows what God has planned for us? So for someone to die, it, it hurts. I have my mother just passed this year, my grandmother, and I have a younger brother who's the reason that I'm even doing this, part of that reason. I miss them. But they, they've, gone, they've passed over. They're safely on the other side. They're never going to be kidnapped, abducted, maligned. You hear me? They're there. Come on, put your hands up and say, I got my name in the Lamb's book. And my reservation is in. I'm going to do my best to occupy and hold my position. But by the grace of God... Should I go? Oh, should I go? Then I need to go. Apostle Paul said right in Philippians, he's right on the whether to go or to stay. Here's what he said. It's more needful for me to stay. So quit looking at death as a Christian. Now, I know you don't want to leave. I don't want to leave your... I get it. I Believe me, I get it. I've come had many, so many close calls. And I fight for life because that's the number one drive in us is for life. Yes. Second most drive is for reproduction. No, for, for eating, for pleasure, for eating, for sustenance. And then we get into reproduction. We get into security. We get into the five basic needs of people. So, you know, hey, of course you want to live. Any soldier wounded wants to live. It's not like on TV, hey, give me a smoke before I die. It's not like that. Give me some of that whiskey before I die. No, I've never seen that. I've seen, give me a miracle. Please give me a miracle. Can you pray with me? Because they know they're getting ready to go and there's no coming back. Come on, say amen. amen. So no, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry that happened, but here you are. And so, did you get healed last night? Did you get touched? I just had a partial healing in my eye. You had, you had what? A partial healing in a my eye. A partial healing. Tell me about that. Well, I, well could, I could see, you know, like I see that clear now, but when I close my right eye. And you couldn't see that clear. before? Well, I couldn't see it as clear. I, I still so can't see clear, it clear. So you'd got more clear. Clear, yeah. Come on, give God praise for that. <laughs> you what? Some lymphoma coming back in my belly. Vomit. Lymphoma. Lymphoma. Yeah. And I can't walk hardly. <laughs> Put your hands up. The power's coming on you tonight. Put your hands up. Holy Ghost is coming on you tonight. Mm. What an honest man. What a moral man. What a good man. Mm. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for his life. Oh, God, we thank you for an extension tonight on this life. 
I'm hearing the word extension. God's going to heal you and keep you. He's giving you an extension. A new lease on life. You're not going anywhere soon. You tell your daughter. You tell your friends. I'm not leaving just yet. There's still work to do. God said he has two unfinished assignments for you. Two unfinished assignments. That power of the Holy. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Oh, come on. If you don't get excited, I'm going home early. I tell you that right now. <laughs> come on. Boy, don't you look sharp tonight. Talk to me. What happened to you last night? Well, first of all, I just want to thank God uh, again for Pastor John yep. and this church, his son, and my dream coming true, meeting you and your wife. Uh, yes, yesterday, and I'm going to say this real quick so I can go sit down. I wanted something from the Lord that I could carry. I want to be a glory carrier. A carrier of the glory. And I received that anointing last night. And I told the Lord, I said, uh, I want to be able to. <laughs> the Bible says you leave them in until they're well done. Well done. Go ahead. I want to be able to carry what God imparted to me. I told him I was going to carry it careful. And so... I like this guy. Uh, I what, like this guy. If you don't mind me saying this here, I'm starting not to say it, but there's a halo that I saw over your head. Oh, Jesus. Early. Jesus. I, I saw it. And I thank Honey, God Honey, I that. knew I was living right. I told you. I told you. This is for you. I told you that I was living right. <laughs> So the Lord has opened my eyes even, even greater. And uh, at the motel, we had about 12, 15 people we were praying for, folks crying and, wow. and getting all kind of miracles. Wow. Uh, I've been resharpening. I just thank God for you. You have impacted my life. Mm. I told my wife we was going to see you, but the Lord brought you here, and he brought me here. And last night, I'm going to say this here. I was over there. I was just trembling. I was just trembling. Wasn't cold. Just felt the power on me. So when you laid hands on me last night, just everything has changed. And I'm looking for greater. I'm looking for greater. I need you, Lord. Let's sing it. Come on. I need you, Lord. Let's put our hands up. I need you, Lord. Right now. Just say those words. I need you. I need you. I need you, Lord, right now. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. I bow my knees and worship at your throne. I need you, Lord, right now. Come on, everybody. I need you, Lord. Everyone. I need you, Lord. Right now, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now, come on, I lift my hands. I lift my hands and bow, and bow my knees and worship at your throne. I need you. I need you, Lord. Right Bruce, let's go up one more level. One more time. Come on, let's do it. One more. I need you. I need you, Lord. I, I need you, Lord. All right now. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right. I lift my voice. I lift my voice. Now my knees. Now my knees. I need you, Lord, right now. Come on, give him a big shout. Come on.
The moment you sense something's changing, you come up and see me. The moment you sense the pain in your shoulders are gone. You're one ear open. Your eyes are more clear. You want to go and take off a brace in the bathroom. You come up immediately. If God wants to heal you without a man or without the gift, he wants it his will, his way. He wants to expand your faith. Where you don't need skin on you. You don't need the prayer from a preacher or an elder. You're receiving in this audience all by your own faith. Come on, it's happening right now. The moment you sense that, the moment you sense that, you get out and say, well, I had this pain or I had this whatever. Don't wait. It's amazing. This is amazing. So are you ordained? Are you licensed? Yes, sir, I am. With who? Um, I'm in the Church of God in Christ, uh, belong to Calvary. Church of God in Christ in Camden, Arkansas. Uh -huh. And some of the people that I know is here from Kansas City, Missouri, where I stayed there for 20 years. They know my father in the gospel. Right here. These right there. Ladies. They all smiling. Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm telling you, you really impact my life. And, uh, you know, the sacrifice. I know it's a sacrifice. My dad asked me today. He said, son, how many days are you fasting now? I say, sometimes three days out of a week. <laughs> He's a man that fasts and pray a lot. Oh, yeah. I love it. So I'm just excited. And I, and I, you know, people told me I'd never be anything. Wow. But I know that greater is he that is in oh. me. Come on, somebody. I remember Chico Holiday used to say, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, than he that is in me. Oh, do it. Come on. Oh, greater is he that is in me, greater is he that is in me, and greater is he that is in me, than he that is in the world. But tomorrow night we should learn those verses. Satan like a roaring lion. Sinking to and fro. I'd have to remember it. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it for tomorrow night. We'll just, just shut the devil down. Shut the devil down. Shut the devil down. I said shut the devil down. Come on, say you're going down. My God. See, it has to come out of your mouth. It has to come out of your mouth. The lady said to me, my husband brought a Buddha statue home and put a Buddha statue right in our dining room, a big old Buddha. And she said, I don't believe in that, Pastor Billy. I, I don't want that there. And she said, but I just feel it's affecting our house. I said, when your husband's not around, you go over to that Buddha and you tell that Buddha statue, you have no power here. You tell that Buddha, say, you aren't, you aren't emitting any spirits into my home. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in you. That Buddha statue was gone in 30 days. Come on, somebody. Quit tolerating. Quit tolerating stuff. You're tolerating thoughts. You're tolerating pains. You're never bringing Jesus to the fight. He doesn't always just show up. Sometimes he just came walking on the water. He just showed up. Other times they had to invite him. He's never going to change that. He wants to be invited. He wants you to bring him to the fight. He don't want you fighting on your own. Include him in, in the name. And when you, every time you say in the name, mm, by the blood, Mm, by the grace. Are you doing that? Well, that silence told me everything right there. You need to do that. Bring him to the fight. That's why he's there. We're not strong in ourselves. We're only strong in him. In him I live and move. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Not in me. And that's why this song we sing it because it's people forget. I need you, Lord. 
Now, why, would I, why do we say that? Because once you learn how to do something, you don't need them. Once you learn how to sell cars, you, used, you really needed them, but now you don't need them. You learn how to do it. You learn how to preach. You learn how to sing. You know, you learn how to walk down the fashion runway in New York. When you, when you first started, oh, I need you, Lord, I need you, Lord. But you learn how to do it. And you don't need them. There's preachers that don't, don't even need the anointing anymore. Before every meeting, they would say, oh, Lord, anoint me. Touch these lips of clay. And now they just say, what time am I on? What time am I on? Just get me to the stage. Just point me to the pulpit. There's a lot of stuff going on that we're not discerning. We can't tell David from Saul. We can't tell David from Saul. God can. And we better. Because the deception is running deep today. Come on, put your hands up. Let's pray right now. Say, Lord, I need discernment at a higher level. I need x-ray vision. I need to see it in the spirit before my natural eyes see it. I don't want to be taken down the river. I don't want to be sold out. I've come too far to have the precious things of God. And I don't want to give them away because of deception. Come on, give God a big, big shout. Come on, powerful, powerful. Go back tomorrow. You're going back tomorrow, okay? Yes, sir. So I want to, you know, I'm going to carry what you give from the Lord to me tonight. I'm you, going to carry. Well, you can carry, carry, but you already got it. Put your hands up. You're going back with more than you even know. Mm. Everything you attempted to do before didn't work the way you thought. But the Bible says in Acts 16, when they praised Him, the doors came off their hinges. They blew open. I mean, there's levels of the anointing. It's not always the same level. Ezekiel said this ankle deep, knee deep, waist deep over your head. And then the river just took you where you were supposed to go. The more you surrender, the more God can take you where he wants you to go. And maybe you missed it when you were young. Admit it, I blew it. But that don't mean you're on time out the rest of your life. There's no such thing as adult time out. Come on, you can do better in the second half of your life than the first half. Come on. Well, my, my wife's the one that hears the Lord. I just, I'm just, you know, I, I pay the bills and I put the peanut butter and jelly on the table and keep gas in the truck and She's the one that says the prayers and knows the Lord. We're just a team. No, stop it. Stop it. That's no reason or excuse. We need every able-bodied person. Come on. Every, say it, every. Abled man, woman, children, babies. We need every, all hands on deck. Come on. Revival's on the way. Come on, somebody. Come on. My church won't let me prophesy. Well, go to the Bible study down the road. Go in McDonald's and prophesy. Go wherever you can find a place that you'll be a voice in the wilderness. Maybe God don't want you fishing in the aquarium. Aquariums are a lot of work. It's hard to keep an aquarium. I have a huge aquarium at home, and it's hard to keep them, keep them right and keep your fish alive. Um, we need people fishing in the aquarium and people fishing in the sea and then, you know, at the workplaces. We need you. And we need you praying. All I can do is pray. That's not all you can do. That's a, that shakes heaven and earth. It pushes back darkness. That's what got me back to Jesus was uh, my grandmother who just prayed and prayed and would not quit. And it would make me so mad that I knew she was praying. And every time I'd resist something she was suggesting, I'd say, well, I'm not doing that. She said, well, prayer changes things. And I just, ooh. 
Prayer changes things. One time she was watching Rex Humbard and I walked through the living room and just turned Rex off. I just turned the TV off. <laughs> and I ran up the steps. <laughs> and she says, prayer changes things, boy. <laughs> I'm thinking, oh my God. I, I don't want to hear Rex. I don't want to hear Maud Amy. I don't want to hear anybody. And boy, look where I'm at today. Look where I'm at today. Thank you, Lord. And she lived long enough to see this. She did live long enough to see, you know, at least the early stages of what her prayers. And that's what God will give you. God will let you see answered prayers. What's better than that? Fulfilled prophecies. What's better than that? Once you really step over into that other dimension, you begin to say, you know, I count those things that I had as manure. That's what Paul said. What I had before, all those accolades, you know, and the riches, the money, all the degrees of being, I went to the house of book, I graduated from the house of interpretation, he said. And I look back and I think, nothing that is nothing compared to this prize that I carry. This is for you too. You know, tomorrow night we're going to have an impartation service right here. Tomorrow night we're going to close this out with an impartation service. You better get ready. Oh, you better get ready. Mm, you better cancel work and school the next day. I'll tell you what. When you show God, I want that impartation, you're saying, man, sign me up for full time. Sign me up to start serving wherever I can. Oh, amazing, amazing. Touch this preacher. Touch him, master. Unlock the box, the alabaster box of ointment. That box can't be effective till it's broken. Then the ointment only flows after the box is broken. Nothing works till if he first touches the master's hand. He chose not the mother mule, but he chose the colt. Because the mother mule was already broken in. So he said, give me the colt. I don't want to ride a mule that will make up its mind to stop. I want to break this thing in so it gets me the whole way past the palm branches. And he took the younger of the two and he sat on that and rode that the whole way in. Come on, somebody say, God's going to break me in. Come on. Come on, say, God's putting a saddle on me tonight. I let him put a saddle on me tonight. No one can ever do me like Jesus. Come on. Say it. No one can ever do me like Jesus. Give him a mighty shout in this place. Hey! I want some help! I'm excited. I want you to keep in touch with me. Let me know what you're doing. My website, billyburke.org. Just I sent you get letters already. What's your name again? Fred James. Fred James. Fred James from Camden, Arkansas. Okay. I'm going to be. Uh... I'll keep up with you. I promise I will. Okay. And you too. You're married to this guy. How do you keep up with him? You what? Then night you pray for me, yeah. my throat, it feel a whole lot better. I believe, I, I believe my throat is healed from that, uh, from that, uh, thyroid. from that, uh, thyroid growth. Yeah. You had a growth there. Uh, the doctor did a biopsy about a month and a half ago, and uh, he didn't want to see, is there something else wrong with, you know, see, he ain't going to say the word. Yeah. <laughs> but, and uh, he told me to come back in February of this year. And, uh, Honey, you're not going to have to go anywhere. Oh. Weren't you wearing glasses last night? Yes, sir. I got my glasses. I caught the Kobe uh, early this year. He gave me the Kobe from, from my neighbor. And I had just, I had oh, just had. The power's still on that woman. I just had eye surgery, four eye surgery on my eye. Just a minute, excuse me. See, now this lady wants to come out too soon. Come on. Oh, I don't know who's here tonight. Oh! Oh, hell, King 
Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. Come on. All King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. King of kings. Lord of lords. Bright. And throughout all eternity. And for all eternity. I I'll sing your praise. And forevermore. And forevermore. I will reign. I will reign with Here we go. Come on, everybody. All hail. All hail. All hail, King Jesus. All hail. King of kings, King of kings Lord, of Lord, Lord of lords Bright, bright morning star And throughout eternity And throughout eternity I sing your praises And I will reign with you. Master, I pray you put a special touch on them that can't be stolen by anybody. I break a copycat spirit off of this cup. I break that familiar spirit off of them. They're a unique people within their own flow. They don't need Saul's armor to do what they're going to do. Baptize them fresh. I pray the whole way home they just have <laughs> glory and more glory. I just pray that a wave hits the people when they go back to what they're doing. That mighty touch of the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody give God a shout. When are we starting the service? We're halfway through it. You're going to miss it if you don't watch that. Quickly, what happened here? Quickly. Uh, my name is Lei. Um, I had many surgeries in my, uh, uh, um, um, in my intestines. Oh. So uh, I had a long history, tw at least 20 years. I'm not being able to eat much. And I always uh, go to, when I go to bed, I will have uh, acid and a bile uh, reflux into my mouth, sometimes the food, just uh, very painful. It, it was uh, almost 20 years, but I've been speaking to it, and for the last four years after I learned, uh, I have authority over it. Um, it, it, it gets uh, better, but not not completely. So when I came, I believe I'm going to receive full manifestation. And it's dead in me. So yesterday, I, I didn't even feel much, but I felt when I was sitting there, I felt like my stomach was moving. It never moved before. It felt like... <laughs> it just moving, and I was like, what, what is this? And then last night, I went to sleep. No reflux. Come on. Somebody got to give a little bit of body praise. Oh, body praise. I like that. Body praise. Not just hand press. Body praise. Move that body. Come on. Woo. Oh. I mean the testimony of every person who comes to this church when they go home and say, gosh, I'm tired. You won't need a sleeping pill. You won't need anything to get to sleep. If you're praising the Lord and presenting your body as a living sacrifice, come on, say, I present my body. Why does Paul say that? He already has your spirit. It's your body that he's after. He has your spirit. You're born. He has you, the, the real you. This is exciting. Where do you, where are you from? Where are you from? I, um, I 
I'm originally I'm from China. Okay. But I, now I live in Dallas in area. Dallas. So yeah. you came from Dallas to be here? Yes. Are you, are you in a hotel somewhere? Yeah. I, and um, He touched me. Oh, He touched me. And the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Come on, say it. Something. Something. Happen. And now, and now he touched me and Precious young girl, precious. Yes, sir, I remember you. Is your wife with you tonight? She is. She's here. You're happy, aren't you? Tell the people what happened last night. Well, last night I came up for prayer because I had had a stroke three years ago, and it caused a lot of ongoing problems that I couldn't seem to shake. It was loss of memory and mm. trouble getting my thoughts together, which mm. I'm still fighting. Mm. And praise the Lord, last night I came up here and I got slayed in the spirit. I went down and... Um, you told my wife that actually what's going on, it was his heart. And the Lord scraped my heart, and um, I feel a lot better tonight. Amen. Amen. Amazing. Actually, you, you should remember the real good part of that story, and that was your life was spared. My life was spared. That's right. My life was spared. And uh, he forgot that part. Had he not been here, he had calcification around the bowels. I didn't know him, and I didn't know anything. And that's when you spoke up, his wife. And, so, and don't be ashamed to tell people that. What happened? What's your name? Bobby. Hey, Bobby, what happened? I was down there at the church, and you know, just, somebody just said a prayer. And just, you know. No, Bobby, no, you, you say what he just told me. Man, I got knocked down. God said and told me what was wrong with me before I knew what was wrong with me. My wife confirmed it, and what a night it was. Give God some seed to work with. Come on, give him some seed to work with. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed of Jesus? I mean, that's like rule number one. Don't be ashamed of the guy that's helping you. Yeah, but I'm not ashamed of him, Brother Billy, but I don't want everyone in the church to know you know, that I was having issues with memory loss. People in the church know more than you think they know. You hear me? Don't, don't be one of those regular church people. I see nothing, I know nothing, I do nothing. <laughs> Let people know that you have grabbed a hold of the hem. And you can lead them to the hem if, if need be. Once you get a touch of God, I'm telling you what, your story helps people get there. Because there is a hymn to touch. Come on, say, there is a hymn. There is a hymn to touch. I'm so happy for you. My uh, favorite part of it was he said, I'm not going to die, but I'm going in the rapture. <laughs> Amen. He remembered that part. That's a good part to remember. Oh, it's a wonderful, wonderful. If this war continues the way that it is, man, we could all be going on the first load out of here. That's how serious this is. I'm, I'm sure the pastor knows more about that. I mean, the Pope's involved in this now because there needs to be a false prophet in the landscape. 
That's who really turns people on to the Antichrist is the false prophet. It takes a religious leader to put confidence to follow a political leader. So when I saw the Pope, and I'm not saying this is so, I'm saying let's just watch it. Let's watch it. You hear me? Let's just watch it. Keep your eyes on that eastern sky. Because the next time you hear thunder, it may not be thunder. You bet. The next time you see lightning, it might not be a lightning. Hmm. My, oh my. Aren't we that close? Some generation has to see it. Why not this one? Yeah, but my dad, oh, quit talking about your daddy. Well, my brother Sam, he's been gone for 40 years. Yeah, I'm glad he, he oh, no, you got to stay now. Stay in the now moment. I mean, if you'd like him to come in your time, believe that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Teenagers don't like that because they want to live life. They want to get married. They want to go down the Colorado River. They want to climb Yosemite Mountain. What's that called? The, they want, what's that? Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm -hmm. They want to do all that. And they, it takes people a while to figure out that no matter what you do here, it doesn't leave you full. You may have a picture of it on your phone. Look, we, look here, we, um, we, was, we, we parachuted. Yeah, but it's over. It's over. There's no eternity to it. Yeah, but I got a photograph. Yeah, you have a photograph and a memory, but you're never going to be there. You don't think of that. Just, that's why people have to keep doing stuff to keep a sense of worth. Where once you see the city not made with hands, oh. mm. once you look at the, the, the glass sea and you can see down thousands of feet and see the crystal bottom of an endless sea of glass. Once you eat of the trees that produce fruit, 12 different kinds for eternity every month. 12 new kinds of fruit. Oh. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Amazing. You'll really be dancing this guy right here. Oh, my God. And I think they'll have suspenders up there, too, for you to... I love watching you. It's real. When you do it, it's real. I love it. Is this, are you guys together here? That's your, how many years have you been married? I have to ask you this. Does he dance at home? Sometimes. Sometimes. Always praising the Lord. How long have you been saved? Forty-five years born again. Come on, give him a big God bless you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. This mighty power of the Holy Ghost. Ooh, wow. Come on, quickly. We got to move quickly here. Yes. What happened, ma'am? Um, well, first of all, Billy, we honor you. We honor the Lord Jesus yes. Christ, and we praise him. Yes. And it's a privilege, like a family member, like I want to run to my brother when I saw no. you. You've meant so much to us. We've just learned about you in the last few months. But I did want to say I'm so thankful to God for this church, to, yes. that we don't have that privilege. We're in New Mexico, and right now oh, we New don't. New Mexico. In Roswell. And, oh. Yeah, in Roswell, New Mexico. And mm -hmm. uh, this is such a privilege to to hear and be in the presence of the pure, unadulterated Word of God that goes forth in His church. The healings and the deliverance we thank God for. And as we go back to our family and everything is waiting and expecting, mm. even the ones that need mm. new kidneys and adrenal glands, they're waiting to see what God can do. And I need to be freed in my body. I've been injured very badly so I can get out of the house because 
Just, Where do you hurt the most? Um, I injured my ankles, my legs. Are, are they hurting now? Right. Oh, yes. They're hurting right now? Yes. Just walk up that down. Just go. Just walk. Pick your knees up. Pick your knees up. Pick them up. Pick your knees up. Pick your knees up. Pick them up. Pick them up, I said. Pick those knees up. Pick those knees up. Follow her. Follow her. That's what? You're the daughter? Come here. Come here. What did you just... Wait, the, the, I'm sorry, can I just... Go ahead. Uh, you took um, the microphone. Go ahead, go. I just, I wanted to be right here when she got healed, and I just know she's going to get healed. We're expecting the devil. Well, I didn't touch her the, yet. The, the, the devil, the devil tried to get us not to be here. We had a nine-hour delay from a hydraulic leak, and we sat there in that Roswell hospital, I mean, in that Roswell, um, <laughs> that Roswell airport, and then we, the airport, where everything was a mess, and it was like we were just getting attacked, 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 and then all of a sudden, it's just like we got here 30 minutes late on Sunday. Sunday morning and we're here and we're here to bring it back we were bringing back to Roswell New Mexico <laughs> I was shackled by a heavy burden come on every hand up me the load of come on every then that hand of Jesus Oh, and now I am no longer the same. Come on, every single voice, join us. He touched me, and oh, he touched me, and that joy. Come on, you got to say something happened. Something happened. Now I know. Now I know. He Here goes the power through your whole body. Through your whole body, that power. Come on, somebody give God a shout. That a mighty touch of Come on, give him a shout. Give him a mighty shout. That floods my soul. Come on, something happened. Something, something happened. happened. Now I know. I he touched me and made me You have to expect more than skin touching your skin. So you got to get, before you even get down here, what are you after? What is it you'd really like to experience? What is that? He will not hold, he won't even abradeth wisdom. He'll not hold back anything, any good and perfect gift. I mean, he wants you to, he wants you to have the full force of the kingdom. The full force of the kingdom. And some of you are afraid. Some of you don't, may not want to know there's more. Maybe you think you've experienced all there is to have. I don't think so. I'm just going to tell you, don't think so. You say, well, I've been slain, so that's not it. Have you ever been knocked out? Have they had to carry you to the car? No, but I don't want that. Oh, sir, you're in charge. I thought he was in charge. Until you, until you understand full surrender. Mm. 
The shepherd couldn't even bring his sheep back unless it was laying across its shoulders. He couldn't bring back a sheep that was fighting. The sheep had to lay, had to surrender to bring back that one, that one that left the 99. That yieldedness. Oh, there's something about yielding completely. Mm. Amazing. It's like when you're in the shower, you even sing. That takes yielding for you to sing. Come on, somebody say amen. It wakes up every dog in the neighborhood. Come on. That's, we have to yield. We have to yield. We have to. If you want all that you say you want. This man with the mustache, read her quickly. Come on, the power's all over you. Put your hands up. The power of God's all over you, sir. The power of God's all over you. A mighty touch. There's digestive issues here being healed in his body. Digestive, and there's a urinary tract infection being healed in this body. He has blockage in the lower part that's being removed and unlocked. Come on, somebody better give God a shout. Come on. Do you know any of this to be true with him? Is this your husband or who is this? He's suffering quietly more than you know. He don't feel good half the time. Give me these ladies right here. Where are you from? All of you. All four of you. Where are you from? Hurry. Kansas City. Come on. Come on. The Kansas City trio right here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, the power's all over all. This, oh, the power. The Holy Ghost. My God, the Holy Ghost. Somebody help me. I need a couple catchers up here. That Holy Ghost. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All through the bones. All through the bones, all through those bones, all through those bones. We give him praise. Come on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on, Kansas City. Oh, there's power. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Oh, whoa. Woo. And I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. And Jesus, Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I let her go. Let her go. Let her go. Come breathe upon me. Come on. Come breathe upon, breathe upon me. Breath. breath of God. Breathe upon, breathe upon me. Spirit of the Lord. As I, as I lift my hands. Come on. And in surrender. surrender to I'm yielded to your spirit. Come on. I'm yielded to your spirit. And I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, I adore. Come on, every voice. Jesus, I adore. Jesus, Jesus, I adore, I adore your holy name. Wow. Wow. There's a lady here. I don't know who this was. They had a knife. They held a knife to your throat. 
I believe this was someone in your own family, but they had, they had put a knife to you. This has been some time, but you've never gotten over that. You're here. This is the night that God removes that knife from your mind. Come on, you need to get down here quickly. I ain't going to wait. I'm not going to wait. I'm going to move on. You're in this room. I don't know who you are, but you're in this room. That knife was held to you. Come on, we just want to support you. Come and get over this. Come and get over this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look, this is a great, a great night. This is, this is your wife. Come and stand with your wife. Wow. The only reason the Holy Spirit brings something up is to get rid of it. That's the only reason. No, what? I heard it so clear. You're sitting right there. Next time you've got to hide better than that, okay? I pray the Holy Ghost, come on you now. This is it. This is over. That day, that hour, that moment is over. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, what's the matter with this place? That'll never happen again. Ever. Hmm. If we all came here tonight to just sing and praise the Lord and just get her free, it's worth the night. Just her. Just her. I call this a 700 Club testimony right here. A Charisma Magazine testimony right here. I, don't, I just know a little bit more than I shared, but I only wanted to say that because it's her story. But this was horrible. This was horrible. No wonder the memory's still there. Remember, your memories, good or bad, don't go away. He removes the poison from the memory. And now you can use that memory as a margin of your growth. Yeah, that happened, but it don't bother me no more. That happened, but the blood is on that. Come on, somebody. Because when they came out of Egypt, they were supposed to eat bitter herbs. What? To remind them of their bondage. I mean, God doesn't want you to ever forget what he forgave you of. Why? To show the goodness of God. But he never wants that to torment you, so he has to heal the, the sting of it. Oh, death, where is your sting? Every time I get, you know, I'm, I, I, we have these great glorious meetings, and, and I'll just say, Lord, just keep me humble. And he'll say, just remember those football jerseys that you took back at the high school. You know, the time you all broke into the locker room and stole those jerseys. I thought, oh, Lord, what do you remember that for? I, the Lord thy God, remember everything. You know, oh, great. He knows how to keep you humble. He knows what to do. Don't rebuke the devil for God keeping you humble. You're more valuable to him as soft clay than hard clay. Tender in his hands. This is a beautiful thing. Did you know about this? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't know. About yeah. the knife, no. You didn't know about the knife. Well, I'm sure she, how long have you been married to her? Almost two years. Two years. Well, that's pretty young. Yeah. So maybe this will open up some conversation and yes. she can go deeper with you and it's yes. going to be a great time. Wow. Come on, give God a big shout for that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was at Canaan Land yes. a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And what I was prompted to come up when that man um, said his eye changed. Canaan Land is a, uh, we, we, we went there so many years in Alabama. Yes, sir. It was a rehab center, I, think, I believe, a church and a rehab center. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Okay. And you were there? I was there, and there was a man being healed um, of his eyesight. And I was out there in the seat. 
and I praised God for healing him, and God changed the eyesight in my left eye. Hey, what? Yes. What, so, in, what, in what way? My vision changed. I wear contacts in the natural, so my, I couldn't see, like it blurred. So I was talking to my eye all the way back to the hotel when I took the contact out, and I could see better. So I went to the doctor when I got back, and they were like, we can't believe this. This never happens. And I was like, what is it? I knew what it was. <laughs> but they said, your eyesight changed in your left eye. It's gotten better. It usually doesn't get better. It gets worse. <laughs> but I have so much more. I have so much more. I want to thank you because the whole trajectory of my life changed when the Lord showed me you on a screen in Branson, Missouri at Keith Morris Church. Kenneth Copeland was ministering there yeah. on a healing service. Mm -hmm. And I had went because I was diagnosed with a chronic disorder that was supposed to put me in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And when you, when you came on the screen, he said, go where he's at next. And God told me, the Lord told me in that meeting, he would heal me and he would provide for me as wow. Kenneth was ministering. Wow. But he said, go to you next. And you're at Millennial, Tulsa. And I went into that meeting. I sat on the lower thing because I couldn't walk up the stairs. It was when they were in the Spirit Life Center and it was raised. And um, around the 4th of July, I think 2017 or 2018. And... Um, so I was sitting down low, and somebody even came up to me and wanted me to go up higher, but I couldn't because I had a fear of going upstairs at that time oh because I was injured, and I couldn't hardly walk as it was, so I wouldn't walk up the stairs. And you came around when that song, Let Him Breathe On Me, Let him breathe upon and you me. were just touching people. And when you touched me, I went down on the floor, and I had like all inside of me was moving and the Lord said you're having surgery of something that you don't even know you're fighting oh I didn't God. let your mind touch that you got up at the end of the service because I was still on the floor and you said the healing you get that you never knew about is one of the best healings you can ever get. <laughs> Cause I because I believe it that. it never touches your mind. I believe that. And when I got up I was delivered from coffee. So I've never... <laughs> from that day again and that's not it so I was going to Southwest Believer I, it's not it it's not it to this day I walk in the miracles and I just keep coming back and you always say you come in one way and you'll leave another way and that's what I expect She's every time. She's taking all my lines from me. And I, I appreciate you sharing Jesus and your yeah. life and your testimony yeah. and your steps but listen to a step so I went to Southwest Believers Convention and it was my son and I, he was like 13 years old at that time. And we're walking and my feet stick to the floor. Well, Kenneth's feet stuck to the floor in one of yeah. his testimonies. Well, when I look up, there you are. And, my, and uh, my son goes, look, there's Billy Burke. And so I wave and you wave back. And the Lord says, go get in the line. And you had a little line over there on the side. And I get in the line and you break the fear. You said it was a generational curse. Right. And you said it was broken. And you touched me and my son. And I went up steps. And I walk. I never went into a wheelchair. And I continue to praise God. Especially when someone else is healed. Because when you... Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. My God. Oh, my God. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on, everybody. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. Morning. By morning. New mercy. I see. All I have needed. All I have Thy hand have provided, and great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Just stand.
stand in his presence for a moment. Bruce, would you play that just through softly? Hands up in the air. Everybody's hands up. Boy, you got to know that tonight. You got to know that, that God's faithful to these people that are testifying, but to you. He don't heal you because you're good. He heals you because he's good. He doesn't heal you because you're smart or rich or you're Jewish or you're a Baptist. He heals you because he's good. He's no respecter of people, but he does respect your faith. Your faith is the, the cutting edge of what you're going to experience in this lifetime. By your faith, it's growing tonight. These stories can only help spike your faith to believe. I want everyone leaving this meeting tonight, believing for increase financially, believing for healing, believing for soul ties to be broke, to being disconnected from the wrong people. Wrong people take you to wrong places. They keep you in a wrong season longer than you should be. I'm praying that you receive an anointing. That presence will grow inside of you. That you will cry for more. The remnant that's being raised in the earth has one distinction. I got to have more. I got to have more of him. I got to have more of his presence. Say these words with me. I got to have more. Oh, I need the Holy Spirit. I worship Jesus. I lift up Jesus. I need more of the Holy Spirit. I got to have more. Till it breaks out of my belly. Till rivers are flowing from me. I got to have more. Every yoke will break. Oh, come on. Every yoke will break. The money yoke, the marriage yoke, the disease yoke, the fear yoke. Come on, say, every yoke will break tonight. Give him a major shout. Come on. Come on, somebody help me tonight. Somebody give God the shout. That mighty praise, that mighty praise. Wow. Just stay, stay standing for a moment, please. I saw you get up. You were healed sitting out here, right? What happened? Um, the demons were pulled out of me last night. Say that again. The demons. <laughs> there were demons. Um, I'm, I've been here since um, Saturday, and I have had to walk down here today. I got with my aunt. She's in a wheelchair. There. Uh -huh. And that we've been wanting to come see you, but I walked here today because the boat door wasn't open for her. But um, and then the demons, I had my arms, they were really black and all, and they healed. And they just, they're healed. You got healed. They, well, they're they're they're, they're, they're healing. healing. And this was really itching, but I mean, the demons. You looked at me, and it's like it was a, um, an hour stare, and I felt the the waves, like you know how a, you know, I don't know how to describe it, but it was like a you know, just a me and you thing, everybody around the room disappeared. And I got so sleepy, so really sleepy. And I went to the motel room and I went to sleep and I slept so good. I even woke up and said, why am I here? What am I doing here at the motel room? And it just, it's ever since I've felt the demons, I just want to be in the presence of the Lord. I don't know if you heard that clearly, but hmm. so you had to you walked here from the yes from the Best Western. Mm -hmm. I, I got almost all the way here. I don't know anywhere around here. I'm from Louisiana, and I've had to walk and and, and you know. I, how how did your friend get here? My aunt. Yeah. I don't I don't know. The van door wouldn't open for her, but I tried and it, it wouldn't open for her. I don't know how she got here, but I looked up there and there she is.
So you walked here from the Best West. From, yes, she, the best she don't drive. Charlie? One, one mile. Mm -hmm. no, one mile across the highway. That's one more mile that I would want to And I need to ride home tonight. if anybody's interested. Do you have a ride home? No. <laughs> Somebody here is going to take you home. I appreciate it, please. <laughs> Somebody here is right oh, yeah, there. Yeah, there's my friends. Uh, yeah. She's going to take you home. Okay. I appreciate that. So, so and tell we me. love you, Billy Burke. I had a son murdered, and I got my two kids are in federal prison. And I'm just, it's just been a bad time for me, so I'm trying Lord to work with the Lord and the Holy Spirit. And I want my kids back, my grandbabies. I want us all to be together, you know. Wow. It don't get any better than this. Just presence. She's just after presence. Hmm. Go ahead and sing that, Lisa, please. I can feel the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely, every hand above the Lord. Come on, here we go. Let's let it out. Surely. Come on. The presence of the Lord is in I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can feel the brush I see. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. So you felt the demons leave, though? Yes, I did. I got very, very sleepy, very, very sleepy. Uh -huh. And I went home and I slept and I woke up and I didn't even know where I was. But then they started on me again today and I said, I got to go back, I got to go back. And you live like, in Louisiana. I live in Louisiana. Do you have a church there in Louisiana? Um, Christ Church, but not like this one. I love this one. I wish I was here. I love y'all very much. I, I don't even know you, but I, I would love to be part of this church. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Boy, it matters where you go to church. It just does. You know, you like to say they're all the same. They certainly are not. Make sure when you leave here tonight, whatever state you're from, that uh, you're in a place that, that makes, keeps you alive, keeps your spiritual blood flowing, that you're supposed to be there. And it's not the sin of the age for you to change churches. You're not here to live in guilt. Or you're not here to owe a man. You're here to... Oh, thanks to God. Oh, no man, anything but the love of God, right? Is that right? Uh, is that right? No, I don't even, if you read your Bible, come on, if you read your Bible, say, oh, no man, anything but the love of God. Yeah. I'm just so, I'm, you just touched me tonight. You just touched me. You're the last person here to touch me. You donated to me. Well, there you go. That's probably why I loved I'm you right $200. there. $200. You write me a letter all the time. You what? You write me a letter. Y'all write me letters all the time. I donated $200 uh, every time I could when I had it. Um, my aunt gets the mail, and I always let her read your mail. But she started opening it without me letting me open it first. But she really loves you, too. She really does. That's the aunt in the wheelchair? Yes. And why is she in the wheelchair? It's my great aunt, um, my mother's aunt, my great great aunt, and me and her come together. We wanted to see you bad, mm -hmm. and we've really come to, to heal her. Mm -hmm. But then she wouldn't hurry up and come on, so I had to leave her <laughs> at the motel. But she really loves you too. I mean, she really wants to be healed. She really, she's a good person. Glorify your name. 
Time is moving on, and I have a note here that says, please don't forget the offering. <laughs> you know, I do once in a while. I get caught up, Pastor John. I did, I, I did this morning or the last night, and listen to me. These meetings, I mean, they cost money. They put the church in a place to bring in speakers and expenses, but I don't want you to give for that reason. Here's the reason I want you to give. I want you to value the things that God values. That's why you give your money. That's why you give part of what... When you give money, it's coming from sacrifice of your job. Maybe a job you don't even like. Or it's coming from alimony. Or it's coming from, you know, wherever. There was a lady in, in New Jersey years ago. She, was a, she worked in a casino in Atlantic City. She worked the tables. She got saved while she was working there. So she was still working there until she got another job. In that offering that night, that table worker gave $100,000 in the offering. So I can say the largest offering in the church service I ever had was from a casino worker <laughs> in Atlantic City. But God touched her. I'm not saying you do the same, but if you just give out of your head, you'll never be blessed to the degree you should be. Give out of your heart. Has this moved you tonight at all? Any of these testimonies? Has any of this stuff moved you? Don't give because I have to give. I'd rather you keep it. I'll hitchhike the whole way to Florida. Don't worry about it. I'll get there. But if you, if you want to, if you're moved by what moves God, that's what matters. I got moved, right? I may have been moved the whole time, but this lady right here, just, where'd she go? She's right here. She walked here from, I don't know, a mile away. I mean, she don't look like she's fit for the Olympics. Come on, somebody help me with this. I don't think she has much, but I think she gives a lot. And she had demons come out of her, and she told you. She didn't care. that She, she didn't give a holy hoot who you are. That moved me, that, that transparency. Give tonight. Give support. Our ministry, but support what the churches don't. Give an offering tonight that you really believe the Holy Spirit you could stand before him and say, I did what you told me to do tonight. That's all I ask. Put your hands up. I'm going to pray. Dear Jesus, I thank you tonight. I thank you so much for your presence. I thank you that you move on hearts. You talk to people. You heal people. You bless people. And I pray in this offering tonight that gratitude, that that, that appreciation for your presence will be felt and seen in this offering. 
I thank you tonight. Say with me, dear Jesus, I'm very moved. I'm very touched. I will do whatever you say. I don't want to ever, ever forget this service. I love you, and I'm going to believe that I'm being positioned for a windfall, for a deluge, for a flood stage money in Jesus' name. Make your checks payable to the Lighthouse. It's on the screen up here. If you're giving by text, if you're text by giving, those of you on the internet, I want you to do the same at home. If God's been moving you there like he has right here, please say so by demonstrating that in the offering. We really, really appreciate that so, so very much. Wow. What a great moment here. Yes, sir, you got a story? Testimony, come, ma'am. When did this happen? Last night, you called out someone that had nodules. Nodules on, on uh -huh. the thyroid. Yes, I've had one test done, and I said it's not malignant, uh -huh. but there's something there. Mm -hmm. And I go back November the eighth mm -hmm. for a scope. Mm -hmm. But I'm just believing God's touched me. Oh, you I had, love Him so much. You had to I testify to yes. that. That's what you. makes it go. Yes. Whenever he says so, and I say so, and two or three Get says it. so. Oh, come on. Somebody give, God a, somebody give God a shout. Come on. Home. Victory. Victory in Jesus, my Savior. He sought me. And sought me. With his redeeming love, he, he loved me and I knew him. And all my love is through him. He sought me to victory beneath the cleanse. Come on, victory. Let's sing it. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me. And he bought me with his redeeming love. He loved me and I knew him. And all my love is through him. He sought me to victory beneath his cleansing flood. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you guys, right here, both of you, both of you, both of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good to see you tonight. Hallelujah. 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 One day, one day of favor is like 10,000 days of labor. And something here has become labor. And God said he's about to touch both of you from this night. Something's going to break so significantly that what has been, well, in the Bible, they called it the iron gate. The iron gate was the, the doorway to the city that could not be opened humanly unless the right officials were there to do that. But when Peter walked out with the angel, he didn't have to pray. He didn't have to speak. They just opened. And what God's about to do is going to blow your mind. Amen. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? It's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's not time to second guess. It's time to just put your hands up and say, let it be so, Lord Jesus. Come on, somebody give... 
Come on, somebody. My God. Oh, I'm telling you, he's in this place. And I'm telling all of you that are on watching online, be here tomorrow night for impartation prayers. Healing, but also impartation. We have to have more people in this hour, especially. I mean, Israel, they got out 300,000 volunteers. They just, where'd they get 300,000 volunteers to fight Hamas and some of the other stuff they're dealing with over there? These weren't trained soldiers. They were just volunteers. They put a gun in their hand and say, come on, stand for the land. Stand for the, the that's our fatherland. Israel was our fatherland. We all came from there, and we're all going back there. If you've never paid for the Holy Land to hold your money, you're coming in for free. Come on, somebody. But you've got to ride a horse. Somebody can ride a horse. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Did you understand what was being said here, sir? It's amazing right here. She's at a breaking point, but she's not going to break. She's not going to break. The best is on the way. The best is on the way. The best is on the way. Somebody's being healed of cartilage in the knees. You've really been banged up your knees. She's right here. That's her. That's her. Yes. How'd you know that? Because she's been waiting for the healing for someone to call that out. Oh, my word. Is that true? I didn't know that, though. No, you didn't know that. I get anointed accidentally, I'll tell you that. I, I, it's, I didn't know that was her. Well, how'd you all know? Oh, they go to your church. These, our son and their daughter just got engaged last weekend. Oh, 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 oh. This is, these are our family now. <laughs> Look out. And there's favor on the way to that family. Stay close to them. And touch both of these knees. They're Jesus. They're Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. And because I know oh. he holds the life is worth. Life is worth. Just because. Come on, everybody, because he lives, because he lives I, can face I can face tomorrow, because he lives. Come on, all fear. All fear. Because I know that girl there, that girl. You, the, you, you, and life is worth the living just because he lives. What's going on here tonight? Oh, I'm just glad to be here. The Lord's been faithful. He's helped me many times in your meetings and brought me through surgery, and I'm just... Continual This is healing your sister? Your blood sister? Mm -hmm. So she's a parish? Mm -hmm. That's yes. <laughs> he was warning me, you better say something really nice about her. <laughs> Put your hands up. Wow. Wow. You carry the living water a little differently than the others do. Doesn't mean anything other than you're uniquely designed to do such. There's a day, there's an hour when these waters will overpower you. And you will stand and speak the oracles of God in a way different than the rest of the parish family. Uniquely designed, uniquely chosen, uniquely for such a time. Oh, and he said the time is very, very, very near. Come on, somebody. Wow. Somebody.
somebody got to get a little bit happy. My God. Mm. What a night this is. Did we take the offering? Okay. Well, I don't want to forget it, right? Keep going, he said. It's wonderful. Come here, both of you. Both of you, right here. See, you're the couple that most people would think don't even need this. He's running around here. He's, he, it just flows from him. But when you give out, then you get empty. And, you, and then you've got to get more. You know, the people that get blood transfusions really have less percentage of having a stroke. If you give blood, your blood doesn't coagulate, doesn't get thick, and you have a less, less than, I think it's 40%, something like that, less chance of a stroke because you gave blood. Wow. She just got healed of cancer. She just got healed of cancer. 90 days. 90, 90 days. days. Just go to the cancer. Curse the cancer. We took communion 4 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Wow seven at night listen to this and we spoke to the cancer and commanded it to die i love you it spread no further i love it and we talked to the surgeon today she said that the cancer was trying to spread <sighs> we cursed it 90 days cancer free there's only one place in the whole bible the whole Bible where Jesus guaranteed the disease they had would never come back. And nobody ever talks about this. It's the woman with the issue. He said to her, woman, be made whole of the plague. He didn't say be made whole. He said be made whole of the plague. Meaning what? This will never happen to you again. And I'm going to say that to you. Never again. Never again, all the days of your life, cancer is gone for good. Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, give God a big shout. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. Come on, the blue, the lady in the blue. Come on, the blue. Come on, girl, hurry up. Power's all over you. It's all over you. He lived. I love this part to buy. Bye. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my. Come on. Here we go. Every single voice because, because he lives. I can face tomorrow, tomorrow because, because he lives. Come on, all fear, all fear because I know. He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because he What's going on here, young lady? What's happening here tonight with you? Talk to me. I, I, my husband passed away two and a half years ago mm -hmm. with cancer. Mm -hmm. But for two years, I took care of him, and my body just took a toll on him. Oh, boy. And I've had medical issues. I have a heart condition. I, I don't skip a beat. I add a beat. You add a beat. I add mm -hmm. a beat. And when it happens, it just drains me of my energy. It's over. It causes me to have trouble breathing. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Come on, somebody. Give God a shout. It's over. It's over. Over. It's over! 
I will say this to you, it would do you, it would serve you well to when you hear phrases like that, when the anointing is in the room, to repeat that in your home as much, something so simple as it's over. There was a guy in the Bible, he said, it's finished. Now, I'm just saying, sometimes it's not that paragraph you read or the chapter you read. Sometimes it's that one word, that sentence that you hear and it just hits you. And at least until God releases it from you, say it and say it and say it and say it. Now, I, I'm just, that just felt that wave to tell you that. How you doing there, young man? You, you, how you doing? Come here. What's going on here with you tonight? Hmm? I'm good. You're what? I'm good. You're good? What do you mean you're good? What do you mean? You need touched tonight. You can't carry this any longer by yourself. You can't. You can't do it. A for effort. But don't do it. Release it tonight, okay? Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Mm. It's too big for you. We all run into things that are too big for us. That's why we sing the song, I need you, Lord, I need you, Lord. There's faith and then there's stupidity. We don't want you to be stupid. We want you to be smart. Mm. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now, I need you, Lord. I need you, oh, my lady. It's the Holy Ghost. Right now, it's the power on you. It's the power on you. Lift my, bow my knees, and worship at your. I need you, Lord. Right. I need you, Lord. I need you. I need you. And I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. This is my mother. She's got macular degeneration and dementia. Touch her. Touch her. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Right now. I got you. I got you. I lift my hands, bow my knees, worship at your throne. I need you, Lord. Open up those eyes. What? They're better. They're better. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, they're better. Their eyes are better. Don't ever say she has that again. Don't leave a miracle service and saying they still have what they had when they came in. Stop it. Get your tongue up to date. Come on, take your tongue down to the DMV and get a new license. Come on, do something. Is that right? Come on, both of you right here. Both of you right here. What's going on here? I've been diabetic type 1 uh -huh. for 56 years. Wow. You want it's, touch. A, it's affected my eyes. Yes. It's affected my heart. Yeah, your it's blood flow, heart. your whole blood flow. And you, ma'am? You okay? Yeah. Um, our, our son's got something. When I put my arm around him, he's, his heart rate's like 120. He does. He went to the doctor, but they don't know what what's wrong. I'm going to touch both of you. And coming out of you is going to be a new stream of healing. You better listen to what I'm saying. You better write this down in your mind, both of you, because the way things have been is over. Amen. It's over. Amen. Visitations. Come into your house. Come into your house. 
Come on, somebody give God a shout. Come on, somebody. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Come on. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Come, come, come. come. In this place. And Holy Spirit, oh, the power. Thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent, omnipotent Father, have mercy and grace. Oh, the power, power. Oh, Holy Spirit! Yes, yes, yes. This place, Holy Spirit, Thou art all this power. In this place, come on, guy. Omnipotent, the power of the Holy, all this power of mercy and grace. Thou art welcome here. This place. Come on again, Holy Spirit. Oh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Thou art in this place. The Holy Spirit, power of the Lord. Welcome in this power. Omnipotent. Uh, in but then, Father of mercy, thou art welcome. Come on, thou art welcome. Thou art welcome. This place, thou. In thy presence, there's a divine. Come on, no other power. No other power can heal. Can heal the heart Holy Spirit. Thou going on here you brought her up who is she to you your wife Sorry. that's okay what's going on here talk to me I need you to talk to me I'm your friend just talk to me I can hear you the guilt's leaving the guilt's leaving all the guilt's leaving all the guilt's leaving. I said it's leaving. How Jesus loves 
and how Jesus loved and Jesus treasures how Come on, everybody, it's a simple song, How Jesus Loves. Come on. How Jesus Loves. Why don't we all come down to the altar on this song? Come on down, everybody. How? How? Come on, everybody. How Jesus loves. How? Jesus loves. Jesus precious. Come on, how? How Jesus loves. One more time. How Jesus loves. It's so true. It's so true. How Jesus, precious Jesus, how Jesus loves. Just with your hands up, you know, just let people go tonight. There's just people occupying your mind way too much that have done you wrong, that are competing with you at church, striving with you to be better than you. Whatever, all of that stuff, let it go. Refuse to play the game. Don't roll the dice another day. You're uniquely designed. You're accepted by the Most High God. There's still time in your life for Him to put the finishing touches on you. Oh, is it going to be amazing. Your best years have been saved for right now. Mm. Your best years have been saved for right now. You love more, you know more. Just refuse to keep going backwards. Get disconnected from the past. Break that yoke. Say this phrase, that was then and this is now. When the devil brings it up, you say, that was then. And this is now. When one of your relatives brings it up, you say, that was... And when you bring it up to yourself, you tell yourself, that was... Come on, give God a shout. Come on. Come on, my God. Listen to me. When you don't do that, and you buy into that, you cheapen the blood. You cheapen the blood that was sacrificed for you. That's what you do. When you pay attention to who you were, what you did, that season of a long time ago or a month ago, stop cheapening the blood. That blood. 
It's not even type A, it's not type B, it's not type O. It's precious. The Bible calls it precious blood. Oh. Or costly. The Greek translation, costly. That's the type of the blood that was shed for you. So whoever you used to be, we don't want to hear about it. Whatever you did, we don't want to hear about it. Change your movies up here. Change the music you listen to up here. Quit listening to anything that reminds you of who you were. Do you hear me? Hmm. I just feel a release tonight. Oh, I was a release in this place tonight. Come on, there's a release in this place. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Only you can prevent your forest fire. Smokey can't even help you. Come on. Only you can stop the devil from building the same issues with you. Either you were forgiven or you need to be. Do you hear me tonight? It's amazing. This is an amazing night. You doing okay, sir? I got him. I got him from right here. No, I got him right here. I got him. He's waiting for me? Okay. What's going on, sir? You're standing in for him? Yeah. He has congenital deafness. Congenital deafness. He, uh, he, was, he was just born with uh, 60% loss in one ear and 90 in the other. Uh-huh. And uh, okay. about two years ago, I just quit buying hearing aids. How much did you pay for them? Uh, did you get the good? I don't know. Well, yeah. I've been buying them all his life, you know. And you just quit. Where I'd buy another one. Six. Has he had prayer? Uh, well, uh, when he was like a little bitty boy, he had, we went to... I think it was Ernest Angley. Ernest Angley. Prayed over him. And, he was a good man, know, Ernest Angley. And, uh, he was. Anyway, so we never saw a manifestation, so he's been wearing hearing aids ever since he's been in diapers. Said, so, uh, Does he talk? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> Can you talk to him? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, he talks he talk sometimes. But... Tell him he's going to hear tonight. Tell him. You, you want to you want to hear tonight? You think you, okay? He told me when he, before he came here that he wanted to hear tonight. He told you that. Yes, and he's just been sitting over there, just fascinated. Really? With you tonight, he has he been watching the services? Or oh yeah, oh yeah. On TV, on streaming. Yep. yep. All the time. I watch it all the time. He watches it too. Interesting. And he told you to bring him tonight. Oh yeah. He he said he wanted to hear. He wants to hear. Yep, he's seen do that. Now, please, when after he hears, act like you just seen a miracle. Would you do that for me? Would you? Should we do a rehearsal? I don't know. They say he's mentally handicapped, but when I had, when he was little, there was, you know, they didn't make any, like, diagnosis in the hospital and stuff. They uh, checked him out, checked You're him out. You're standing away from the stage. I don't want you to fall off the stage. They checked him out for a long time. Uh-huh. And then, uh, finally, they just came to me and said, uh, we, we don't know what's wrong with him. Just, uh, he's very, very slow. Mm -hmm. Take him home and love him. Take him home and love him. That's what they said. And, and, and you're the and husband? Uh, been married like two years. Two years. I'm the new husband. You're the uh, new husband. The new guy. <laughs> okay, that happens. He didn't walk. He didn't stand up till he was four. Mm -hmm. Four years I'm old. It's the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the best and the last. Year. Let's play Bruce. Let's Bruce. Let's play Jesus. Jesus. Something about that name. Let's all put our hands up. Let's just worship with the Lord. His name is Jesus. There's just something 
the fragrance after the rain. The death of the dumb, I break your power. You lose it the sky. I break your power. I break your power. Be thou loosed! Get down there and clap. Right next to his ear. His name is... Right close. He heard that. Huh? How about... Bring him up. He's my master. He hears it. Somebody better give God a shout. Come on. you hear that? Do you hear all that? He hears all of you! Now, now, if you know how to make noise when I count the three, because we got some people holding out. I don't even know if you're Pentecostal. I think we've had some people sneak in here that need to get to the upper room after this service. Come on, one, two. Wow. Somebody give God a shout. Come on. Pretty amazing. Are you happy? Hmm. Amazing. I'd be really careful if I was you. I think he can hear everything. <laughs> Are you glad you came tonight? Mm. Amazing. Just bow your heads, close your eyes for a minute all over the place. This is all great, but boy, if your name is not in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you're not born again, if you don't know Jesus, the greatest healing of all, without a doubt, is the day you say yes to the Lord and He forgives you of all of your sins. He does. He forgives you. He lives inside of you. And He shows you how to live for Him. We preachers preach the Bible, but we can't show you how to live for Him. We do our best. But he will show you from the inside out. Not by rules, not by regulations, but by the Holy Spirit. 
There's a few people here tonight that need to make that decision for him. I don't know how you could say no after seeing all of this here tonight. When I count to three, if you'd like this cleansing prayer, I want you to raise that hand quickly. I'm going to pray for you. One, two, three. Put them up. One, two, three. Hurry. Hurry. Yes, yes. I see the hands. Thank you, sir, in the white T-shirt. Thank you. Thank you, big guy right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you over here in the sitting in the pew. Thank you. Pray this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, tonight I acknowledge you as Lord and Savior. You died on the cross and rose again the third day just for me and for all who would believe. There's no other way to heaven. You're the way, truth, and the life. And I declare you, my Lord, in this meeting tonight, with your grace and your help, I'm never going back to who I was, where I was, and everything that I did. I'm a new creature in Christ. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody give him a big, big shout. Come on, give him a mighty shout. Oh, my God. Are you happy? Are you sure you're happy? He said yes. Are you coming back tomorrow night? Tomorrow night? Are you coming tomorrow night? Yeah. Does some of these people here need help? (laughs) You know, I want you to just stay a moment because the presence is here. I just want you to linger a little bit. Put your hands up. I believe there's still some healing going on. I do. And I want you to pull it your way. Pull it your way. It's here. Peter said, oh, Lord, my hands, my feet. Uh, When Peter realized... What was taking place, he surrendered. First he said, no, no, you're not touching my feet. But then when Jesus said, Peter, it's either all of me or none of me. Oh, did he respond. He said, oh, Lord, it's my, touch my hands, touch my feet. Come on, right now, I want you to surrender to the, whatever you've been battling physically. If there's a bondage in your life that you've been struggling with, whatever that bondage is, Bondage isn't just making you restricted. It makes you feel horrible. It leaves you with a, I'm not even saved feeling. Let's break that tonight. Let's break that bondage here and now, right at this altar. Whatever that may be, some form of prejudice, racial, pornography, you know, just promiscuous living. Whatever it's making you feel soiled, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. It just ruins a beautiful, sunny, beautiful day here in Muskogee County. Come on, say, wash me. me. Holy Spirit, wash me. me. Cleanse me. me. Even the hidden parts. Even the the secret parts. parts. Let your cleansing power The crimson tide of Calvary. Go deep in my soul tonight. And break the bondage. Help me live to please you. And I will give you all the praise. Come on, give him a mighty shout. To God be the glory. To Come on, everybody. To God. To be are the things he with his blood he no no I don't want him up here I don't want him up here. Go ahead. Okay.
He has done. Just this mighty touch of the Holy Ghost. Touch your master. Touch her. Heal that body. Oh, that's the mighty power. There it goes. Then should I gain any praise? Come on, church. Here we go. Let it And the power he has to God be for the things he has normally I'd be walking off the stage but let me just say this because I just heard it this is right off of the grill. Tomorrow night is going to be special. I'll, I'll, I'll say this. Get here early. I think these pews will be packed tomorrow night. If you're watching my stream, get here early. When I pulled in tonight, there didn't seem to be many places left for the cars. Something broke here tonight. Something broke in this meeting tonight. Amen. Amen. For thine is the peace. Good night. Peace.